Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss basic table-level data validation tests for SQL Server, specifically row counts, unique or natural keys, and foreign keys. Some of the simplest data validation tests are table-level row counts. Let's go demo four common row count tests right now. Before we start, a quick note that the final section of this video walks you through accessing all SQL snippets out on GitHub. Now let's jump to SQL Server Management Studio and review the row count data validation test. So I've loaded up a SQL snippet script here, and I'm going to review the rule set number one row counts. Scroll down. The first thing I'm going to do is execute the use demo HR because it's defaulting to master. Could have selected it up there as well. Okay, so test case 01, row counts. We want to verify the full row count of a table countries is exactly equal to 25. So we can highlight that, execute it, and we get a pass. So what's going on there? We're doing a case when the count is not 25, return a fail. If it's equal to 25, else, then it's going to return a pass. And that's our status, and there's our status value. Let's move along to test case number two. It's verifying a partial row count. So in this case, we want to verify that they're for region number one, not all rows in the country's table, but the rows that are subset that's region one. We want to verify that the count is eight. Go ahead and run that, and we should get a pass, and we do. Sometimes you may want to do a relative row count between one table and another. So in this case, the table countries, the total count of rows there should be five times greater than the count of regions. There's three levels here. Level one is show me the count in countries. 25, and a sibling on the same row, same level, is show me the count of regions, four. Now I can do a select this way that puts them together on the same row. The countries count is 25, the regions count is four. So there's inner query number one, A, inner query number one, B, inner query two, and then there's an outer query. So if we run the whole thing, should get a pass. And what it's saying is, look at it this way when we had this inner query, 25 and 4. And the outer query is saying when countries count, 25, is less than 5 times the region count, 4. 5 times 4 is 20. If 25 was less than 20, it would return a fail. Well, it's not, so it returns a pass. That's a quick way to compare counts between tables to make sure that the ratio isn't off. And the fourth test and final test case for row counts. This one is going to look at the recent row count. I use this a lot on big tables where I don't want to count everything. I just want to show in the last week when we have daily loads or if it's real time in the last couple of days, I want to make sure nothing flaky has happened. So I'll have counts. And in this case, we want to see that the recent row count is greater than or equal to five in the table countries where the date last updated is, in this case, my data is getting old, so I put it out to 150 days. But let's look at this. Let's select the count from countries. Just execute that sub part. There's 25 rows. Select the count where it's less than 150 days. Eh, still 25 rows. That's the inner part. And then the outer part is going to say, hey, the row count, if it's less than five, fail for the past you know, 150 days. Next up, rule set number two, the foreign and unique keys. A quick caveat here first. Good database design would preclude the need for these tests. You'd have constraints that enforce the foreign key or the uniqueness, but life happens. And you will encounter implied foreign keys or unique keys, uh, slash natural keys, that are missing the constraints. Uh, read the GitHub article on this topic in the links below in the description, and it'll give you some good examples. Uh, and we're going to use these tests that i show you in a minute to quickly spot violations. Test case number five, we're going to start with verifying that a unique or natural key has no duplicates. And in this case, the table demo HR countries has only a single field, country name, and unique key. If there were more, two or three fields, you'd put comma, second field, comma, third field, here in the select and down here in the group by. Let me give you a visual for why. We're going to select, execute it, the country name, Argentina, Australia, Belgium, and then the match count, 111. If there's two, that's a duplicate. So having count greater than one, there are none. So it's going to obviously pass. And then we wrap that with our logic for pass-fail test case status. So our test case is a pass. And that's how you check if a unique key has duplicates. Let's move along to test case six. Verify that the foreign keys 
child is not an orphan. So this is a case where a foreign key exists, but its parent does not. So in this case, we're going to look at the demo HR countries and the demo HR regions. Regions is the parent, countries is the child, C, P. They join on region ID, it's the foreign key in uh, the child. And in the parent table, region ID is the primary key. And we're basically left joining it and looking for the parent is null. So let me do this and execute. You get a visual, one to one, two to two, parent to child. If I do an is null, there won't be any return because there were none that were existing in the child but not the parent. So if there was a five down here and a blank in the parent, that would be an orphan child and the P region, parent being null, would show up. So that's all that this is doing. It's looking for nulls on the outer join. And if we wrap it in the select case, it's gonna get a pass. Now let's move along to test case seven, which should be the last one in the primary and unique key constraints. And this one is a foreign key parent. Make sure that the foreign key parent has children. This is a case where the parent exists, but there's no children. That's what we're looking for. So here, let's see, select the country ID in the parent and child from the same tables. Let's just look at that. Execute, null, Argentina, Australia, null, blah, blah, blah. So here, uh, artificial surrogate null and a true null. Here, we're gonna say, show me everything where the country ID of the child is null. Execute, oh, it found a bunch. Child ID is null, parent ID is populated. But for the purpose of this test, for whatever reason, I wanted all of these thrown out and excluded. So if I do that and exclude the parent country ID, Italy, et cetera, now when I run it, yeah, they all go away. <laughs> and so if I wrap it up with the logic for the pass fail, the count, if the count is greater than zero, it fails. If the count is zero, it passes. It's going to be a pass. To download the SQL scripts of this video, open up the browser and go to https colon github.com slash data research labs, all one word, hit enter. On here, you'll find a SQL scripts link somewhere. It happens to be here, it happens to be here. You can search for it on the page. Anyway, find it, click it, and just scroll down on the page and you'll see the information on the page, skip data dictionary, data validation scripts, that's what you want. Click that, scroll down, you can read the details on that, how to use it, what it is, notes, and then here we go. So SQL Server, there's all the different scripts. MySQL, I don't have the scripts written yet, I gotta do that. Oracle, I have the scripts and the videos done. So find the link you want, let's say diff checks, click it. Scroll down, and these ones are so big, the SQL snippets, that I had to roll them up and co or collapse them. Uh, anyway, let's expand that. There's the details, and here's the big long SQL script that diffs the schema, the column names, table names, data types, etc. So I have an expected set, and then you compare it. Anyway, the uh, little clipboard icon here is what you would click to copy all of this properly formatted and ready to go. And it's in the clipboard, so why don't I Pop open a brand new notepad and paste what's in the clipboard. There we go. There's all the SQL from the script ready to go. You can use it in your SQL editor. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.